batsman right hand bowler i think we have gone live uh, madam yeah yes yes so uh, good evening everyone so in continuation with our uh, pph uh, drills that we were uh, doing first we started with uh, uterine devascularization and then with the compression sutures so now we are extending the uh, skills of managing the pph with internal iliac artery ligation today and uh, dr j uh, i think he is one of uh, the very confident uh, endoscopic surgeon and also open uh, 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 surgery i think he is very well versed with retroperitoneal anatomy and uh, yes. he uh, really does it uh, in standardized steps and also uh, he has made it uh, very simple which can be replicated and uh, it can be it is uh, quite doable for all uh, gynecologists uh, across like right from uh, uh, the remote areas to a corporate setup i think uh, if we follow the same steps i think uh, it is easily uh, uh, doable for every one of us even if we are single consultant specialty units so uh, this uh, skill that uh, we will be talking today and uh, we will be discussing i think it is the need of the hour in the current situation for all gynecologists uh, so uh, i think uh, it is extremely important for each one of us to be aware of this uh, skill uh, over to you sir i think uh, you can start now yeah uh, so see guys in the previous sessions madam has covered uterine devascularization and uh, compression stitches over the uterus okay uh, i think before we talk of internal iliac two three important points i'm sure they have been covered but i'm just repeating uh, it's better to reserve blood prior to doing any cesarean section or attempting any delivery especially if we have that facility okay so i do understand in periphery that facility may or may not be available but it is wise if you are working in an institute to just reserve blood there is no need to issue it just reserve it because as madam has said before pph can happen to anyone right second the time to take a decision is the thing which actually decides maternal mortality and mother outcomes in most of the situations okay you can't really sit on the uterus thinking by just looking at it it will contract all such types of things are like thinking how dynogest will work in endometriosis on a mobile nodule right so we know it doesn't really work so in the same manner do not waste your time if you think you are comfortable with uterine artery uh, ligation like what madam has shown at that lower segment if you are comfortable by passing this b lint sutures and uh, that other sutures you know hemen sutures and cho sutures and this and that and whatever and medical management and every other thing you have tried now please remember one thing out of all these exercises uh, you know uh, putting that balloon inside the uterus and all these things out of all these exercises the thing which works the best is internal iliac ligation the reason why it works the best is because it is not going to chop off the internal iliac okay you can't really chop off the internal iliac artery especially the anterior segment what you are going to do is when you clip it or when you ligate it okay you are going to reduce the pressure you are going to reduce the pulse pressure of the flow inside the uterus this pulse pressure becomes so low once you ligate the internal iliac and it stays low for a prolonged period of time okay which really helps you in settling down the bleeding which occurs out of an atonic uterus okay this is something which you have to keep in mind and remember one thing it is not that what shilpa madam said that people in periphery cannot attempt it we have around 360 people so if i am to take a vote out of 360 probably we will have this is according to dr shilpa this we will have 325 to 330 people saying that they have some remote fear of opening the retroperitoneum and because they have this fear of opening the retroperitoneum they do not want to go and attempt internal iliac ligation for practically all situations right so the most important thing which you are supposed to deal in this internal iliac ligation is your fear it is really nothing to do with anything it is simply your fear okay so i'll try to share the screen and go on to youtube <laughs> shilpa madam stay unmuted please so i'll go on to youtube and uh, i will open 
internal ILAC ligation masterclass. Okay, fine. Silpa madam, can you hear what is playing on the screen? No, no, we can't hear. You will have to give the voiceover. Okay, I will give. So I'll just fast forward it a little. Right. So see, once we are at the pelvis, just look at this. You have two fingers, which I am going to place. Just see, my index finger goes inside. Can you see that? Yes. It goes in the pelvis. So you need to remember this. I just pause this. You need to remember this, that when you are ligating internal iliac, one thing is for sure, it is the vessel which is located in the depth of the pelvis. Okay, the vessel which is in the depth of the pelvis is the internal iliac. Someone might say, patient is in hypotension. How do we understand if that is the internal iliac? Go to the sacral promontory. Okay, the vessel which dips towards the pelvis, the large vessel which dips towards the pelvis is the internal iliac. In this situation, don't try to understand and remember that the vessel which gives a lot of branches is the internal iliac because when you are in such a fear situation or when you are in such a panic situation, what is typically going to happen is that these vessels, though they are arteries, will have a reduced pulse pressure due to hypotension. Okay? So you have to palpate it in the depth of the pelvis. This is your first take-home point. Okay? Second question, I'll just draw this thing in a little while. Uh, let me just go to my uh, diagrams for drawing this. Okay. <clears throat> see. Silpa madam, can you see the screen here? Yes, please. See, this is your sacral promontory. Okay. Commonly, what will happen is you would have exteriorized the uterus. Typically, we have a habit if, let's say, the abdomen is this much. Okay, these are all practical points which we see. So, I will request some people to not laugh on this because then people will take it like that, coming, coming, drop, drop and start laughing. See, what will happen is, typically when we enter to do an internal eyelid, we will see that for caesarean, the incision which is taken in the final seal is this much. Okay, people want to attempt a mini lap caesarean section most of the times. Okay, head of the fetus is 10 centimeters. Okay. So, my size of the incision is 10.1 centimeter or 9.9 .9 centimeter. Don't really try to go by such micromanagement. It is not good. The first thing which you are supposed to do is when you feel the need to do an internal iliac, kindly widen this thing. Okay. Bindas. It should be a wide, large incision. Okay. Because most of the time it will be a fan style. 99% of the time, at least when I have gone to do internal iliacs, it is always a fan style. So, honestly, the first thing which I do is I convert a mini lap into a finance style. Okay, so it is a large finance style incision which you have to keep in mind. Second thing, remember, your uterus is exteriorized. Okay, so the picture which you see in the pelvis is something like this. This is the round ligament going here. Okay, and this is the large infundibulo pelvic entering in the uterus here. Okay, so what are you supposed to do? The best technique or the standard simple very, very simple technique is to use, which we'll of course see in the video, is to make an incision here, open the retroperitoneum. When you open the retroperitoneum here, the first structure which you are going to see is going to be the external iliac artery. Okay, it is going to be the external iliac artery which is going to be running like this. Okay, it is going to be the external iliac vein which is going to come underneath that and your internal iliac, okay, is going to be here. It's going to be this way. It's going to go in the depth of the pelvis and it is going to be here. Okay. You are supposed to go and do a ligation here and the anterior segment of the internal iliac. This ligation which you perform on the anterior segment of the internal iliac can be a single ligature or a double ligature. We will go to that video so that you can observe the whole thing. Uh, you can observe the whole thing live. Okay. Like, let me just show that video. Just a minute, I just try wanting to convert it into a uh, this thing high, uh, high speed. Fine. So, once that much anatomy has been understood, 
we'll go to the video see this shilpa madam can you see this yes fine see this okay pack the bowel that's the first step once you enter inside push the bowel out see i'm using packs just pack the bowel do not let that bowel come inside your field because people hate the bowel okay see that round ligament and the ip can you see that you have to go down in this window remember open the window go down you can feel a beautiful sort of a you know clean pelvis use good retractors please never forget to use good retractors in these type of situations never okay never so do a nice packing of the bowel prepare everything so that once you start no then there is no pushing pulling pushing pulling pack it okay where to pack that's a common question pack in the paracoli gutter okay do not put it in the pod our habit is to put everything what we find in the pod don't do that put it in the paracoli gutter i am using the most simple instruments which you have that is a monopolar okay in order to just take off the bowel from there yeah just let it just go away see that now you can see the ip ligament there can you see the minute you open there is the ip ligament okay shilpa madam is it visible yes yes okay that's the ip ligament guys not nothing to be done to the ip ligament it's a beautiful ip ligament okay see what i'm holding with that artery forcep ip ligament it's a large nay large ip ligament and artery forceps to hold the peritoneum okay very simple why am i using artery forceps because 99% of the situations when you have to attempt okay an internal iliac you will only have artery forceps the nurse would not have prepared vascular forceps by the time of all these things can you see that first structure the beautiful structure which we like to see always ha huh? what is that structure called it is the ureter see that ureter down there can everybody see yes yeah see the standardized technique what am i using here now shilpa madam spoke of standardization look at my thumb going inside the depth of the pelvis just my thumb no index finger no ring finger no middle finger no tiny finger nothing my thumb goes inside because once my thumb goes inside i am able to hold on to the tissues much better can you see the external eye like there now see that see now my assistant has started to retract you have to push them no all of us have this thing see this external eye like can you see that and see the internal eye like going down can you see that yes shilpa madam visible yes. no yes okay just open the fat close to the internal iliac kindly do not follow that guideline okay medial to lateral lateral to medial medial to lateral lateral to medial because in this situation what happens is majority of the times people don't know where to go they are fighting with each other one will say medial another will say lateral don't do that please okay second thing i'll just pause it here because i want to show the ureter see that the ureter is in my right angle forceps mixed thirds okay remember we never put a small gauze piece inside in that space i have had instances where people have forgotten that gauze piece right there patient has come up with a beautiful pelvic abscess within 5 to 8 weeks of the previous procedure and it requires a hysterectomy after that okay it's very very tough to take it out from there because it causes severe fibrosis over the vessels okay so you can see that ureter nice and clear okay just put your mixed start there can you see external iliac internal iliac right angle put the right angle and just open it can you see okay i'll just show you one little thing here after we finish this dissection okay that there will be internal iliac vein underneath this but it is a very small portion the internal iliac vein is not a very large vein remember despite its multiple challenges internal iliac is a small vein okay just keep that in mind length huh? otherwise it has a huge flow but it's a small vein can you see now the mixture is across the internal iliac can you see that shilpa madam see yes yes mixture 
use an artery forceps grass okay this is live surgery huh? this was done by me on facebook on request of shilpa madam little long back so she was like next time you do an internal you show it to us so this was the same surgery which i have done live on facebook so you will understand that in approximately 4 minutes you will go to an internal iliac and you will simply ligate it okay you need to put 3 4 throws just ligate it right see not a single time the hand of the assistant has come inside okay not a single time the reason why the hand of the assistant is not come inside is because of the packing which was done please remember this point see to do internal iliac is a cake walk okay it's the easiest thing on earth understanding the only problem is that you need to ensure that your troubles don't come see most of the times as i'm again repeating convert that mini laparotomy into a financial incision that's the most important thing men oh people's hand will go inside you know full hand will go inside the paracolic gutter it's not required cesarean is not a cosmetic surgery you know you really need to open it up you need to exteriorize that uterus you need to pack the bowel if need arises dissect the bowel from there that sigmoid attachments open the peritoneum this is your standard step don't use the gauze squeeze and use your thumb anguta okay once upon a time no, there was a joke jai anguta chaap hai okay that means i am an illiterate okay use that thumb of yours to dissect why i am saying this because the thumb will go and immediately palpate the external iliac the minute the thumb goes and palpates the external iliac if you just push it down you need to push it down okay the first structure with your thumb will hit is the internal iliac believe me okay try it next time the first is the internal iliac with your thumb you can just rotate the thumb all the fascia all the fat all that in people using sponge on a stick okay one tiny sponge that nurse will take she will take 2 minutes to prepare it and put it on that sponge holder and give it to you do not do that that is a very very wasteful exercise do not do this okay please remember one thing this internal iliac was demonstrated on one side i have seen people who have called me up stating i have done right internal iliac but the patient is still bleeding are obviously internal iliac is to be done on both sides okay it is right side and left side you have to do internal iliac on both the sides you can't really say i will do selective internal iliac ligation it's not possible you need to do it on both the sides that is the next take home point okay now comes one important thing which we do after internal iliac okay this is pra- i don't even know if it is mentioned in the textbooks but i am just telling you what we do once you do the internal iliac ligation on both the sides you ensure that you take this mop this large gauze piece which you have okay and just compress the uterus if it is atonic uterus also just compress the uterus over the sacral promontory trust me once you have done internal iliac just compress the uterus on the sacral promontory keep that compression on that uterus for 3 to 4 minutes you will visibly see a lot of atonic pph disappear and that bleeding stop the best way to assess this bleeding if it has stopped or not is to put a fresh mop in the vagina and clean it okay because that is the best way to understand how much that patient is leaking from there there is also something which is mentioned once upon a time is to look for dorsalis pedis so i want to answer this question very nicely uh, we are fortunate we have facility of doing intra surgical ultrasound okay we have an ultrasound machine for the ot okay i don't know how many people routinely use it but i know one thing most of the gynax must have their own ultrasound machine correct no they would be having it when you suspect this do not use your finger and irritate the hell out of your nurses in trying to palpate that dorsalis pedis just put a small part probe and switch on doppler the first vessel which you see which is palpating okay which is having a flow is the dorsalis pedis that's the only vessel you will see you just need to place it between the large toe slightly above it okay on that eminence of the ankle 
I don't know what is the name of that bone. I've forgotten it. But you just need to place it there and you will see a beautiful Doppler flow through that vessel. Okay. Remember one more thing as far as internal iliac is concerned. Do not waste more than three to five minutes in taking this decision to go ahead and ligate the internal iliac. All right. And one final thing. I don't know where this concept has come from. That should we dial, ligate the anterior division of the internal iliac or should we ligate the whole internal iliac? Okay, I'll again share screen just to make you understand a very simple thing of this thing. Okay, uh, I'm opening up that same image which I just now showed a little while back. See, the posterior division is here. As soon as the internal iliac is given, the posterior division comes out. There is no way in which you can go and ligate the posterior division in a caesarean section. Okay, you really need to dissect the whole bowel from here. So, you have to approach the common iliac first and go underneath the common iliac to ligate the posterior division. So, 99, 100% of the time what you are going to ligate is the anterior division only. Don't really get worried about all that thing. Anterior, have I ligated or have I ligated posterior? 99, 100% of the time. In the caesarean, you will end up with the anterior division only. Okay. So, do not get worried about what is going to happen to the pain in the gluteus and all these things. Save the lady first. Then you think about her gluteal pain. Because it's not going to happen that you will ligate the posterior division. Okay. With this, I want to tell one last thing. After internal iliac, in my career so far. Okay. We have had 18 women who have delivered second pregnancy. Naturally conceived. Naturally conceived, huh? Egdom naturally conceived, not even letrozole, not even clomiphene. Okay, just naturally conceived. They have delivered very nicely, but you have to be ready for atonic PPH in that second delivery also. Out of these people whom I have done, two, two people, okay, have ended up with an obstetric hysterectomy at the time of caesarean, okay, at the time of the next caesarean. So the commonest question is, first time you did internal iliac, second time, how will you do? Very simple. Same place. Nothing is there. Okay. Vicryl would have disappeared long back. So don't worry about that Vicryl. If you think collaterals, I could not see. Are you will not see collaterals like that. Seeing collaterals are those are microscopic collaterals. You will not really see those collaterals. You will see it as a stock only. Understanding and you will be able to ligate that thing. Okay. So don't worry about it. This is just my practical experience. I am not the best possible obstetrician like many people out here. Okay, nor do I do around three digit deliveries in a month. But I'm called very frequently for doing internal iliacs. So I just thought I'll share this. I can open the house for asking questions. Yeah, I think the uh, video that you showed was the one which you showed uh, when we started Bangalore Group uh, and you did yeah. that well in the midnight. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you did on a Sunday night or a Sunday night, I believe uh, you did that case. So that was yeah. like, I mean, such an eye opener for uh, many of us who saw it like live for the first time ever. And uh, I think that was uh, like, you know, I mean, one of those uh, times that we all felt, yes, I mean, we also can do uh, this for our uh, you know, PPH in obstetric uh, cases because I think uh, as students, we have not seen it uh, being done so easily. That is one of the thing that uh, we have in our mind, that block in our mind, that uh, this is something which needs a lot more experience or we need to have a vascular surgeon uh, to do it for us. Uh, so you tell me like, uh, okay, you showed it. So how do we practice it for people who want to do it? So do we have somebody as a standby, like a surgeon or uh, like a, a vascular surgeon or like another gynecologist where we try and uh, do it in a case uh, which is not having PPH and then we learn it or uh, what is your suggestion? How did you pick it up? See, I, I picked it up frankly because of Ashwat sir. Yeah, that's a referral unit for all these bad obstetric cases. So, almost every third, second night, fourth night, there will be an internal iliac. Okay. And we would end up ligating the internal iliac in no time, you know. But uh, uh, honestly, I never tried it on simple cases to start off with because I, that time as postgraduates, I never understood that we can try it on simple cases. 
I used to always think that there are so many PPHs which are happening that you can do internal ILAX as and when you feel like, you know. But uh, but yeah, I think for people who want to practice, what is important is you can start practicing it just by opening up the retroperitoneum in a cesarean. Okay, you don't you reach the internal ILAX, don't ligate it because it is not recommended, right? Otherwise, but uh, the simplest of the things is just learn to open the retroperitoneum because remember. Even if we were doing it for demonstration purposes, we finished it in three to four minutes, right? So if you look at our normal speed, it is not like this. In a normal speed, we open and we ligate the internal ileac probably in a maximum span of hundred seconds or maybe two minutes maximum. Okay, the entire internal ileac on both sides will finish in three to four minutes. The reason why I'm saying this is okay uh, is because you need to be probably that fast when you want to arrest that bleeding which is happening. That is the first thing. Okay. And uh, I think, yes, maybe one can try doing it in yeah. normal cases. Okay. So you said you will widen the incision before you go ahead and ligate the internal iliac. So yeah. do you do a muzzle cutting incision? Or you just... No, no, no. No, 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 no. No need to cut the muscles at all. You can just use a good... See, I would use the Devers retractor. Can you yeah. see that? In the, in, the, in the cesarean, I mean, in that internal iliac. There are beautiful small divers, you know, those thin divers also which are available. So for people who have that, see, many a times when you're going to another people's places, okay, you may not have that divers which is available with them. You may not have mixtured, you may not have artery force, back box. You can't ask for 100 things on a particular day. People are already stressed out, you know, in all these things. So you can't really ask for these type of things. You must try to do it with the instruments which you have, okay? So in your experience of doing so many cases, what uh, what complications or what difficulties you faced while doing it? Like what injuries or uh, is was there any bleeding which was uh, difficult to control or like, you know, the separation or uh, that isolation of that uh, internal artery was difficult? What was it that like, you know, you faced when you were doing so many cases? See, uh, honestly, remember one thing. In PPH, the vein is going to be collapsed. So the vein is going to be collapsed. It is not going to be so easy for you to go and damage the vein unless you are causing a traumatic damage to the vein. Right? So it's very difficult to injure the internal iliac vein while doing an internal iliac ligation in a patient with PPH. That's very difficult to do. Right? I think one of the commonest mistakes which people do, I think we have not experienced this as a difficulty because we have always... From the second month of my post-graduation, I've been opening retroperitoneum first, okay, and then doing a hysterectomy, right? So, the commonest probable problem is inadequate dissection before doing internal ileac ligation, okay? When you ligate a structure in the body, that structure has to be skeletonized. That is the rule of surgery, be it open surgery, laparoscopic surgery, rheumatic surgery, whatever. So, skeletonize the vessel. A lot of times people don't skeletonize it. They leave their fat over it. Because they think that if you dissect the fat, that fat will have capillary bleeding. Which is right. Okay. So, if you are worried about capillary bleeding, if you think you can't do sharp dissection, use your thumb. Your thumb is an atraumatic, sturdy instrument which will push off the fat. Believe me, I am talking from my experience. Don't use index fingers. Sometimes people have beautiful long index fingers which will go very deep. Okay. Thumb, thumb will not go so deep. It will go straight onto that vessel. Okay. Just open it up and you will not have injuries. Trust me. You will not have injuries. It is more scary to do uh, compression sutures. It is more scary to do uterine artery devascularization because there you are not set posterior broad ligament. See, if you have deep endometriosis with cesarean section, Okay, it is going to become very difficult to do posterior compression sutures, which you showed, madam, because bowel is going to be adherent and bowel is going to be edematous in cesarean section. So, one may not be able to dissect it. So, just one has to be very careful. It's a very simple procedure. Retroperitoneum is untouched, it's a native plane. You can go there and do what you want. You can even dance in the retroperitoneum and nothing will happen. Understanding? So, you must, everybody, all people who are listening, must get the hang of opening it at least. Yeah. So, um, 
so how many cases you do in a year uh, roughly i mean i know now that you don't do much of freelancing but uh, i think you used to do it quite mm -hmm. often in the beginning would be now would be less than maybe 30 a month i mean 30 a year madam mm -hmm. so uh, would uh, do do you see a lot of these patients on central line when you go especially in uh, other hospitals we want to put we want to put we always tell the anesthetist to put that is because monitoring of CVP is very, very important, madam. Okay. See, a lot of... the In pregnancy, blood loss is very fast. It is like neurosurgery. You damage a cranial sinus, no? Patient will lose two liters of blood in no time. Okay. Same thing happens in obstetrics. It's like neurosurgery. Obstetrics and neurosurgery are the same. You lose a lot of blood. Okay. So, one has to put central line. There is no question. Put a central line. Take it out after two days. But at least monitor it nicely with a central line. Your CVP, your heart pressures, everything are nice. Your anesthetic is comfortable once you have a central line. Yes. So uh, once you do this ligation on both sides, which you will take roughly about, say, four to five minutes to do. After that, how long do you wait for the bleeding yeah. to come under control? Like how much time do you take to put the uterus back in and uh, suture uh, the abdomen? Maybe what three to four. No, after both the internal LX are done, put the uterus back. And as I said, Put a firm compression with your hand over the uterus. Keep it for three to four, maybe five minutes. And you will see that most of the field has become dry. And what all parameters do you check during this time? Do you ask the anesthetist to uh, tell you about the CVP, the everything, like whatever uh, the monitor says? And then you... This is a very good time. Actually, once the internal LX is done, then it is a very good time for the anesthetist to put the central line. Because trust me, till that time, even he will not get time to put the central line. See, I'll tell you practical life situation, what happens is nobody is prepared for it. So when it happens, somebody is going to call you up. Hey, what bleeding or a big up, Right? All this work is going to be done by the anesthetist, madam. You know? Then one nurse will be called inside to take out some more drums, put more gospies on the table, arrange blood. Husband will be made to run in a blood bank close by. Some relative will go. All this is going to happen. Okay, by the time you reach, one more friend would have reached. Sometimes all such things are very common. So what is going to happen is, once the internals are done, no, that pulse pressure has settled down, that bleeding has stopped. Okay, so automatically the patient starts settling down. Then the anesthetist will feel the neck very nicely. If he feels the neck very nicely, only then he can feel the cephal uh, jugular vein. And when he can feel the jugular vein, only then he can enter inside for putting the central line. Okay, through that carotid vein. It is not easy otherwise in a collapsed vein for an anesthetist also. Try and understand. On top of it, the anesthetist in 99.9% .9 of the situations would have given spinal anesthesia. Okay. And patient would have been sedated. So, maintaining that patient through sedation and spinal anesthesia and doing internals is not very easy for our anesthesia colleague also. Yeah, yeah. So uh, tell me this. I mean, after uh, uh, by doing so many of these cases in your uh, experience, uh, did you face any case where you had to still go ahead and do a hysterectomy in spite of doing uh, the internal iliac artery ligation on both sides? So, so what we normally do is before we opt for a hysterectomy, we'll put a common iliac clamp for ten minutes and see. Okay. Common iliac clamp is something which is a standard vascular clamp. Uh. So, Dr. Padma Priya, till he joins back, I mean, what has uh, your experience been with regard to internal iliac artery ligation? Oh, you can't unmute yourself?
Okay, see, I mean, I have tried it in uh, two, three cases because majority of the time uh, I have uh, uh, had good results with uh, uterine devascularization or with uh, compression sutures. So as Dr. Jay showed, I think it is just our fear which uh, stops us from attempting to do this internal iliac artery ligation. I'm so sorry. I just lost the network completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please take over. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, I was telling you, uh, what was your question, madam? Sorry. Can you uh, ask Common again? iliac artery clamp you were mentioning. Yeah, yeah. So, common iliac artery clamp is something which you can do, okay, for 10 minutes. It's a very simple vascular clamp. I'll send you the photo tomorrow. You can, you don't even have to dissect it. Just open the peritoneum and put it on the common iliac. Simple. Okay. Keep it for 10 minutes and still if the bleeding is persistent, then better is to do a hysterectomy. Do not take a larger time to decide on if an obstetric hysterectomy is needed. That is the single most important reason for a lady going into DIC. So if you have done internal iliac artery ligation and still want to do an obstetric hysterectomy and you have done uh, ureteric dissection and all that, in such situations, do you see any other difficulties while you do the obstetric hysterectomy? Do you do completely... I don't use sutures. I, do, I don't use sutures over the uterus while doing an obstetric hysterectomy. I do it with the sharer, okay, and um, and uh, I do I try to do a complete hysterectomy, almost okay. always a complete hysterectomy, never a subtotal. Okay, okay. And uh, do you find that bladder dissection is difficult in such cases to reach the vault, or uh, do you? Find no, no, no. Uh, Just hold the bladder, lift the bladder, and push it down. Simple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's about it from my end. Do you think you need to add any points? Can you unmute Dr. Mm. Patrick, yeah, please? Yeah, Once just more. unmute it. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is a question for both of you, Dr. Shilpa and Dr. J. My question is uh, very valid in terms of uh, our anastomosis when we go forward for uh, uh, uterine transplant. Our post uh, um, this have you you know post in, uh, bilateral internal iliac artery ligation i want to know the outcome of the fetus in the second pregnancy uh, any iugrs you people have seen no 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 not at all at least i have not seen no 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 i have not seen uh, dr padmapriya it's not uh, i don't think uh, it's there do you, do you have any studies or uh, any data no, which, uh, we have to do that you and me remember so um, yeah that's why that's why I asked that question because uh, I have seen in one case, but there again that uh, you know uh, it was placental insufficiency insufficiency, but I don't know whether it is post this or not. I've not I've seen a couple of cases, but one I had uh, IUGR. The baby was two kgs. Yeah, okay. that's why I was asking. Okay. Yeah. So I think I just want to mention one last thing. See, quite a lot of times people are asking this question about obstetric hysterectomy and bladder dissection. A very important thing you should remember is that when you begin an obstetric hysterectomy for accreta, okay, or percreta or whatever you want to do it, all right, uh, dissect the external iliac artery through the inguinal canal, okay, very important thing. The reason is. Once you ligate the internal iliac, there is a lot of blood supply to that percreta, accreta, whatever. It comes from the inferior epigastric artery. Understanding? Simple. Just open the external iliac close to the inguinal region. You will see the beautiful inferior epigastric artery. No need to clip it. Just cut it. Okay? And you will have no bleeding. No bleeding which will come from the tacrita percrita. That was a question which somebody asked. So I thought we should answer because once they do internal iliac, they are puzzled where that bleeding is coming from. It is usually going to come from the anastomosis there. So keep that in mind. But for that, the vascular anatomy knowledge should be like, you know, I mean, to the top. See, forget about external iliac at the inguinal ring. I mean, we will be seeing stars looking at the uterine only. 
So you should understand our situation where we are in such a panic situation that like, you know, I mean, you don't know what to do. One side, they will be pumping methargin, prostadin, giving myometrial prostadin, loading them with syntocinone, giving them all sorts of things. And then you are trying to do a devascularization. You are trying to put a compression suture. You are trying to do an internal iliac. And then you come and tell that, oh, you have to do this dissection at uh, external iliac near the inguinal ring. I mean, it is not possible. See, you need to be a so I will so I will tell you one thing. No, I'll tell you one thing, Shilpa Madam. That 12 o'clock night internal ILAC which we had done, okay, mm -hmm. you had scolded me at 12.45 in the night because I was singing, okay, so uh, while doing the internal ILAC and you had a complaint against my voice, okay. The reason is when everybody is panicked, once you can open the retroperitoneum, everybody, Anybody who can open the retroperitoneum and is even slightly good at it, your panic will go away, madam. Trust me. Your panic is not to ligate the internal iliac. Your panic is, if I ligate the internal iliac, what if I ligate the ureter also with it? That no, is the no, worry. No, 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 no. That is not the worry. The worry is, will I be able to save that patient or not? Okay. The worry is not whether I will ligate the ureter. Forget about the ureter. I don't care even if I ligate that external iliac at that point in time. It is about whether I'll be able to save that patient or not. Because the uh, the uh, the rapidity in which the things will go out of hand in that situation, like agreed, you know, agreed. It just happens. Agreed. So, yeah. Uh, it's like it's just out of our control. So you can't see you were smiling, laughing and singing and all that. I mean, we understand because see daily at least like, you know, five times you open the retroperitoneum and you keep doing it. Like how we open the lower uterine segment. So if we do it, like say once in a year, obviously like, you know, I mean, we have to run through that thing at the back of our mind, start our preparation, which our mind will be completely blank. You can't really expect us to like, you know, go there and be at the best of our this thing without any inhibition center. Okay, so first of all, there will be like, you know, so many people who will be like, what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened? I mean, will my wife be okay? Will my daughter be okay? Will my daughter-in-law will be okay? So, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, it's chaotic. So, in, agreed, this, agreed. Chaos, in this chaos, we how can we bring about a difference in uh, obstetricians, say, judgment in obstetricians? By, by yeah. starting to operate on the retroperitoneum in simple cesareans where you don't have to ligate internal ilac right yes. open it and keep yes. follow four standard steps which i mentioned open it pack the bowel use the thumb to palpate the external ilac and slide the thumb down the first structure which you will palpate is internal ilac palpate it and be happy for five minutes because any which ways you are not going to ligate it no so but in critical situation you know that first four steps you can do very easily then only comes the question of passing the mixture through it. Correct? Mm -hmm. No. That you will do, madam. Any which ways. No, I have done it. I'm not talking about myself. I mean, see, if I call, there will be three people who will run and come, including the greatest of the surgical oncologist and the vascular surgeon. That's not my I point. I will also come from Bombay if you call. <laughs> see, that's not the point. The point is about how to make every gynecologist self-reliant. Okay, see, that that's the way we should work from henceforth. Yeah. Where, uh, kind of like, you know, make every gynecologist confident enough. Like she should be, yeah. she or he should be able to go to another gynecologist and say, it's okay. I mean, let us do it. Yeah, it's the, that's the thing, madam. One must start it in normal cases, open and follow first four steps. Once you are able to reach the internal iliac, when need arises, you will be able to ligate it. Because see, every for every human being, there will be that first time. Right, madam? When they have to do that internal for the first time. It, it's for everybody. It's for you, for me, for a newcomer, for whatever. Right? So, in order to overcome the anxiety of doing it that first time, okay? Mm -hmm. If they are trained into it in a normal cesarean, just this simple basic things, okay? Then I think life will become much more easy is what I think. Yeah, tell me one thing. I mean, see, you you heard our class on uh, the uh, compression sutures and uh, devascularization. And I know that you were not very convinced with the devascularization because you said this is yeah. all very cumbersome, putting these many sutures on the lateral wall of the uterus where people tend to go wrong in multiple steps wherein they can poke something, wherein they cannot ligate it properly. Broad ligament is tough to manage. And you felt that internal lig lig ligation was much more easier than doing all this heroic things of uh, devascularization so yeah. uh, 
why do you think i mean this is uh, uh, this is what you thought because i know that you don't do that many obstetrics as we do uh, yeah. but at the same time uh, what is it in your mind how many complications have you seen with regard to the devascularization pro- uh, the uh, procedures so madam you you mentioned one very important point in that devascularization okay though i was listening to it uh, there is one important point which you mentioned and i think people should take that point very seriously is that you said your sutures should pass through the musculature of the uterus on this side and when it is coming back it should be going through the broad ligament correct see madam the biggest problem is you don't really know where the venous structures are located in that broad ligament in a pregnant lady okay you can have dilated veins which will be placed much more laterally than what you anticipate them to be placed so yeah, even if you take Window. of course you are putting that window light and all these things and you are checking through that but that is you okay that is you because you taught this we've seen countless patients with hematomas broad ligament hematomas because that needle no madam has gone through one of those veins it has come out it has gone through it has come out suture is done okay but after 48 hours the patient has come or that same doctor has called up hey hemoglobin has become from 11 to 3 now why so you do a ultrasound you will find beautiful 400 500 cc clot lying there okay it is because that vein is yet to undergo resolution madam see vein is the first structure to undergo resolution after any uh, maternity you know delivery and all the first thing to undergo involution is the vein okay then it is the lymphatics then it is the artery okay so what typically happens is in this type of situations if you may be good but if that aberrant vein is present in the broad ligament it causes broad ligament hematomas which is very tough to manage because everything is super edematous okay in that type, particular situation and another problem that hematoma is in the retroperitoneum because it is in between the two leaves of the broad ligament madam okay mm. so that is a very 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 bad situation to manage okay i personally think so that's why i said rather than doing something like that i am not saying it is right or wrong i am nobody to decide that okay because it is that guy on the table who yes. is facing the pph he is the best person to decide what he has done not yes. you or me okay yes. but uh, but this is my experience okay i think if you can open the retroperitoneum it is a clean field yaar yeah? it's an absolutely flat pitch you can go and you can do whatever you want there okay yeah. so on the fourth i would request you in whichever locations you are operating so if, if yeah. we can so at least one case of internal iliac artery ligation in a gynec case where we are doing hist- uh, hysterectomy like without actually ligating but just showing to people who come to observe you who come to watch you operate so i think uh, uh, we can sensitize more and more people uh, in doing this thing which will help in their practice i mean uh, that yeah. is Uh, definitely i think which which we look forward to i think you go around uh, across india operating so if we can add this point to wherever you go see rather than uh, looking at the bowel nodule so this will be something which uh, will be like you know more uh, uh, what do you say more practical and also something which they can reproduce in their day to day practice and they can save many more lives uh, in periphery 100% 100% agreed Yeah, tomorrow we should start that you know not yeah tomorrow okay done we'll do that thank you sir it was excellent it was one of the best sessions i think uh, uh, you uh, you demonstrated it very well i think we should do this once in 3 uh, months the same session so that more and more people will uh, start doing it and i think we should teach this to more and more people so thank you very much i think one of us like me and dr padma priya should start uh, doing it and then start teaching start posting one one cesarean when i'm coming you take out the baby and then we will show it on that cesarean you know yes sir <laughs> but also if we give it to you <laughs> what will we do sir? we should just sit there and be collector keep collecting <laughs> okay sir thank you very much 
for your uh, valuable inputs. I mean, it was really excellent. I think this is what uh, people wanted to know. And we can continue uh, these kind of uh, sessions wherein uh, we uh, we tell more and more about things, which is uh, much more easier than uh, the cumbersome, uh, uh, cumbersome steps. Yeah, thank you. Okay, madam, thank you.